please give the question a try before moving forward. We're going to see that in this question there are two phases to the problem. In phase one, we have the collision of the bullet with the block, and then in phase two, there's a projectile motion of the bullet block off the edge of the table. We're actually going to deal with phase two first, and then come back later to phase one. Now, in any projectile motion situation, we're going to want to use the following table. We have the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement for both the x and y direction. Let's fill in the information for the y direction first. And to do that, we're going to note that the bullet and block, when they slide off the table, are only initially moving in the horizontal direction. The block and bullet are not moving up, nor are they moving down. So that means the initial velocity in the y direction will be zero. The acceleration in the y direction, of course, will be negative 9.8. And then the displacement in the y direction would be simply the height of the table. And that height was given to us as one meter. Note that because the objects are moving down vertically, that that displacement will be a negative one. Now, it turns out this will be sufficient information to allow us to calculate the time of flight using this equation from projectile motion. Note, this is the displacement. Even though it's labeled with delta x, we're actually dealing with essentially delta y in this particular calculation. So let's plug in the known values. Because we have zero multiplied by time here, we can eliminate this term. And then with some simple algebra, we can solve for time. And we get 0.452 seconds. So we can fill that in for the time in the y direction, as well as the time for the x direction. Those times will always be the same in projectile motion questions. Turning now to the x direction, we do not know the initial velocity in the x direction, nor the final. We do know, however, the acceleration, which is always zero for the x or horizontal direction. And then the displacement is given to us, because if we look at the picture, we can see that the horizontal displacement is marked by the letter D, and that indeed was told to us in the question as being two meters. So we can fill that in. Now, using the same equation from projectile motion, we can actually calculate the initial velocity in the x direction. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've plugged in known values from the x direction. Because we have a zero here, this term will cancel out. And now we can simply solve for the initial velocity in the x direction. Now this value turns out to be critically important for phase one. So let's keep this value in our minds and look at phase one next. Remember in phase one, we had a collision of the bullet with the block. So let's draw that collision. We have the initial where the bullet is approaching the at rest block and then the final where the bullet is embedded in the block and then the two objects begin to move together. The key is to recognize that the initial velocity that we had found when the block and bullet were sliding off the table becomes the final velocity of phase one. I want to say that again because that's really important. The initial velocity that we calculated when the block and the bullet slid off of the table is actually going to be the final velocity in the collision phase of this problem. So basically we know that right here the final velocity of the bullet and block system is 4.43 meters per second. Now because this is indeed a collision, we can actually use the conservation of momentum. So let's set that equation up right here. Notice that on the final side of the equation, we have combined the masses m1 plus m2, which will be the mass of the bullet and the mass of the block, because those two objects have become embedded in each other and therefore constitute a single object. So now we can just simply plug in the known values, and we're going to be able to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet, which we've represented by v1 here. So let's plug in the values. Note a few things here. Notice we first converted the masses from grams into kilograms by multiplying by 10 to the negative 3. The masses, unfortunately, were given in grams, so we just have to take that extra careful step to convert to kilograms. Notice also that the initial velocity of the block was placed as 0 because that block initially was at rest. And then finally, notice that the final velocity of the bullet block system is 4.43, as previously noted. So now we can simply use some algebra to solve for the initial velocity of the bullet. And when we do that, we get the initial velocity equaling approximately 143 meters per second. 